Russian Z-War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov revealed the date by which Russian troops were ordered to liberate the Kursk region. The deadlines apparently were shifted. The propagandist shared the secret information on September the 20th on his Telegram channel. He recorded a video message from the Kursk region. According to Kalashnikov, the Russian armed forces have less than a month left to push Ukrainian forces back across the border. Unfortunately, they didn't take us with them to the front line where the escalation began. It is clear that the task was set to push the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region by October the 15th, said the Z War correspondent. There are serious doubts that the Russian army will be able to carry out its plans. An attempt to launch a counter-offensive near Glushkovo petered out in a few days. The Russian armed forces managed to capture the village of Snagost. And at the same time, the Russians received a new breakthrough from the Ukrainian armed forces with a blow to the rear. It was previously reported that the Russian army had been tasked with liberating the Kursk region by October the 1st. The Kremlin has probably already realized that such a global task is impossible to accomplish within such a time frame. The Russian armed forces will not be able to drive Ukrainian troops out of the Kursk region until the end of the war. More than 100 settlements of the Russian Federation will be under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces for a long time. This is the conclusion reached by another Z-War correspondent, Romanov, after he visited the Kursk region. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to use maneuvering tactics during their offensive in the Kursk region, which allows them to reliably hold territory without major losses, and the Russian army can do nothing about it. He believes that during the month of the offensive, the front line in this area has already formed and there is no need to expect any significant changes. We will have these swings until the end of the war. The LBS, the current positions occupied by the enemy, they will not change much. There may be some situational swings back and forth, 5 to 10 kilometers. The same residents will move back and forth. But the situation will be like this, while the enemy will pump forces into the area. And he will, because it is more convenient for the enemy to fight on our territory than on his own in the Sumi region. He will dig in here well. Romanov said he made it clear that one should not believe the statements of the chief of the general staff of the Russian Federation, Valery Gerasimov, that the enemy has been driven out of Kursk region. This will not happen soon. People in a southern suburb of Beirut woke up on Saturday morning to the scene of a collapsed building in tight security hours after an Israeli airstrike killed Ibrahim Akil, a Hezbollah commander who was in charge of the group's elite Radwan forces. Lebanon's health minister said on Saturday the death toll from the Israeli airstrike had risen to 31, including seven women and three children. About a dozen members of the Hezbollah militant group, who were meeting in the basement of the building that was destroyed, were among the dead, as well as three Syrian nationals. Faras Abayad told reporters that 68 people were also wounded, of whom 15 remain in hospital, in the deadliest Israeli airstrike on Beirut since the summer 2006 Israel-Hezbollah war. Late Friday, the Israeli military said the strike killed 11 Hezbollah operatives, including Akil. Hezbollah announced overnight Friday that 15 of its operatives were killed by Israeli forces, but did not elaborate on the location of these deaths. Israel launched the rare airstrike in the densely populated southern Beirut neighborhood on Friday afternoon during rush hour as people returned home from work and students from schools. On Saturday morning, Hezbollah's media office took journalists on a tour of the scene of the airstrike where workers were still digging through the rubble. Search and rescue operations are still ongoing the Lebanese health minister added, with the death toll from the strike likely to rise. He said hospitals across the country are full with wounded people following the mass explosions of Hezbollah pagers and walkie-talkies earlier this week. Lebanese troops cordoned off the area preventing people from reaching the building that was knocked down as members of the Lebanese Red Cross stood nearby to take any recovered body from under the rubble.